Today's guests include Clackamas County Commissioner Paul Savas and Clackamas County Assistant Director of Transportation, Mike Besner. Commissioner Savas, would you like to get us started? And you're on mute, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Um, and thank you all for joining us today. Um, during this ongoing pandemic, the Board of County Commissioners has prioritized staying directly connected with our residents and stakeholders. We've held many virtual listing sessions and a town hall during the past few weeks, and we continue to see a lot of public participation. I'm gonna take what I hear today back to the full Board of County Commissioners. And as Kimberly mentioned, today's topic is transit access and service in Clackamas County. Joining me today also um, is Mike Besner, Clackamas County's Assistant Director of Transportation and Development. And um, I also want to note that, you know, some of you in Clackamas County rely on transit to go to work, to go to school and to play. Transit connects to our communities and families, our urban areas, uh, wild areas, and our neighboring counties. Some of you in our county use transit <clears throat> uh, not as a choice, but a must, meaning it's your only choice, uh, only, only means of transportation. As someone who is passionate about improving transportation um, in the county, uh, I have observed and experienced the lack of transportation infrastructure and limited transit service in the county. We see areas in our county that have buses that go only through one area and only sometimes a, a few times per day, and sometimes not even on the weekends, uh, limited service there as well. Uh, urban areas that have nearly no service, we call that a transit desert, uh, and we also have um, suburban, several urban areas where there is more than a mile gap between any resident and, um, and a line of transit or, or a mile or more from a, or where a person works. So it's not often practical for someone to walk you know, more than a mile, and a mile is even a long ways to walk. Uh, a bus stop um, that doesn't even have sidewalks is also a problem, and uh, TriMet limits its service, uh, for example, with areas that don't have sidewalks or shelters as improvements. So it's very, very difficult in Clackamas County. Uh, there are a lot of policy conversations happening uh, among our partners in the region about transit, and we're interested in knowing your experiences with transit in Clackamas County. We want to hear your opinions, your personal experiences, and your suggestions. And remember, this is a listening session. We may or may not respond to some of your comments, but mostly we're here to listen and to hear from as many people as possible. And with that, I'll hand it back to Kimberly. Thank you, Commissioner. We've received some email comments and questions ahead of today's listening session, as well as we have some questions that the board typically hears about transit. And so I will sprinkle those in throughout our conversation today. And so with that, let's get started. If any attendees would like to provide a comment, please do so now by using your raise hand feature on Zoom. This raise hand feature is at the bottom of, is on the Zoom bar, which is either at the bottom or the top of your Zoom screen. And if you're joining us by phone, you can hit star nine. When providing comment, please give us your name and the area within the county from where you are from, and keep your comment to a minute or less. Thank you. We could go ahead and get started too with some of the email comments that we have received. We have one here from Kyle. He writes, I live and work in Clackamas County. Cruz Meadows is the largest corporate park in Clackamas County and is served by one line that runs very infrequently. Currently, it takes 20 minutes to drive into the office compared to the two and a half hour transit commute. I live close to Clackamas Transit Center. Is there a way to make it reasonable uh, excuse me, is there a way to make it a reasonable time to get across town, like an express bus that circulates the transit centers so that it makes sense to use transit for going longer distances? Thank you for your question, Kyle. Would anybody like to uh, respond to that? 
I'd, I'd be happy to. And, and as soon as I start seeing hands being raised from the audience, I will, um, I'll limit my comments uh, deliberately. I'm actually going to share a screen here, if I may. Um, it's a map. Can you all see that? Not yet. Okay, I'm gonna go back to, oh, I, I made a mistake. Okay, here we go. If you can all see that map now? Yes. Okay, for those, so if you look, if you actually were to divide that map in half um, and look at the upper half and lower half, the lower half is essentially Clackamas County and the upper half is, uh, uh, Washington County, a lot of Washington County, and a lot of um, uh, Multnomah County. Uh, and if you take the, the, the other quarter of that, the fourth quarter, the, the lower half to the right, that is that is Clackamas County. You can see there's not a lot of colored area. That's a lot of area that doesn't have any transit service whatsoever. Um, and the area that the uh, the, the where the um, gentleman made had the question is in Lake Oswego, which is about right smack dab in the middle there. Um, and there's just not a lot of connectivity or service um, uh, through Clackamas County. And um, in our discussions with TriMet, we have learned that they don't have the resources and, and any future plans of adding any new lines or service to Clackamas County. So historically, um, a lot of folks have um, our, uh, the city of Sandy, for example, the city of Canby, Malala, Wilsonville, and others, um, because they knew they were going to get a lot of transit, they, they took it upon themselves to develop transit service. And so forth. So therefore, of the three counties in the area, Clackamas County has more transit agencies than any other county because they took the initiative to do it on their own. And um, that is something I think that sometimes we talk about in a region about what if we did something different if TriMet doesn't really offer that service. So, um, uh, Mike, you have anything you want to add to that? Um, no, I think uh, I think you 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 got that. That that was pretty good. I mean, I I do want to make sure people are aware that we are undertaking a transit development plan for Clackamas County uh, that just started this year. Uh, we've never had one before as a county. Um, you know, a lot of people don't realize, you know, it. we can't actually provide transit using our gas tax dollars and our road fund. It's a whole separate deal. Um, road fund is just for really vehicular uses. Um, so this plan, we're, we're hoping that um, I think it was Kyle that that he could give input and that we can take that and it'll help feed um, basically our our needs assessment and that's what we're doing right now is we've been doing we've looked at existing conditions and some of that is the map that Commissioner Savage just showed and we're going over the need now and we're the idea is to say identify areas where future service can happen um, and then and then talk about how how can it be provided and in conjunction with all those service providers that already exist, but they don't cover outside obviously the the areas where they're already operating. So um, that's the whole point of our plan is how can we get better connections throughout the county. Thank you both for that. Um, so again, if anybody would like to offer a comment, you can do so by using the raised hand feature on Zoom, which is on your Zoom bar at the top of the bottom of your screen, depending on your device. You could also send us an email and that we could read here, and you can write to us at clackconews at clackamas.us, and if you're on the phone, please dial star nine. Uh, we do have a comment from Dwight Frashier, and um, Dwight, uh, if you would like to unmute yourself and please share your comment and tell us where you're from. Well, thank you for allowing me to unmute myself. That was very, it was pleasurable. It's fun. Anyway, um, I am the transit director in uh, Wilsonville and uh, we operate SMART. And I just wanted to uh, let the commissioner know how much, uh, first of all, I appreciate. Um, I've been around three and a half years and he has been beating this drum uh, for Clackamas County the entire time that I've been here. And so I uh, applaud you for that. And I just want to let uh, everyone know that uh, the small providers uh, were not uh, just sitting back and waiting for things to, to happen. 
uh, we meet regularly. Uh, as a matter of fact, we were on a call, uh, some of us this morning, discussing uh, service along um, the I-205 corridor uh, between uh, Wilsonville and uh, Clackamas Town Center and uh, service that would um, basically touch every uh, city hamlet uh, between here and there uh, along the I-205. Uh, but not only that, we meet uh, once a week, uh, generally every Wednesday, and we discuss um, those things that will hopefully bring change to the transit uh, landscape in Clackamas County. We're trying to fill those gaps. We are the leaders of the transit uh, operators, Sandy and Canby and, and Malala and Wilsonville and, and uh, the folks there at Clackamas County that operate uh, the Mount Hood Express and other services. So I just want everyone to know that we recognize that uh, the only way to fix this thing in Clackamas County is for us to do it ourselves. And we're not going to depend on uh, a big brother to do, uh, do what we can do for ourselves. So I will say that and I will shut up now. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, Dwight. We will next move on to Rob Kappa. Rob, will you please unmute and tell us where you're from? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, my, uh, I live in Milwaukee. I use mass transit uh, quite a bit per week. I'm only a mile from the transit center, uh, the light rail in downtown Milwaukee, which is close to the bus also. And I, I really rely on it and I enjoy it because it saves me time and money. But I realize that's not, not the case in other parts of the county. My comment is this, and it's probably not gonna be very popular. I would rather pay more in taxes for mass transit than I would in increasing the size of freeways, which only produce more congestion. Thank you, uh, 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 Commissioner Paul Savas, and thank you, Kimberly, and thank you, Mike, and I'll be quiet and listen. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Okay, um, thank you for that, Rob. Let's um, talk about something else that we hear commonly uh, as it relates to transit. And it also relates to I-205, which we talked about briefly, or we heard about briefly. So how is doing the I-205 uh, Abernathy Bridge and the corridor improvements going to improve transit options and other travel modes for um, people who you know, don't just use their car? Well, thank you, Kimberly, for bringing that up. Um, the local leaders um, in Clackamas County, uh, city councilors, mayors, uh, meet with a group called the Clackamas County Coordinating Committee. We, re we meet in a couple different forms uh, once a month, um, and um, we discuss a number of transportation issues and land use issues in the region. And something that came up when we learned that um, I-205 was uh, slated for expansion um, some some uh, folks spoke up and felt that we ought to be adding transit to that. And we, we jumped on that idea and we tried to promote that. And I have reached out to TriMet because it is within their district. And I think ODOT has done some, um, some stuff, some, we're going to do a bus on shoulder study, but there are no resources to add that. And yet, I-205 is being considered for tolling as well to fund that expansion. And tolling is usually looked at in a number of ways. Number one, you can toll like a bridge to rebuild a bridge or to add capacity to it. Um, and then there's a new kind of tolling called variable pricing or congestion pricing tolling that um, basically discourages people from driving and tries to encourage them to take alternatives. And in this stretch of I-205 um, that was mentioned earlier, um, there is no transit alternatives. So in a sense, it's a very difficult situation that if you're trying to um, discourage expanding roads um, and improving them, um, then you need to offer the alternatives. And transit is obviously the number one alternative. However, um, again, there's just no indication uh, or suggestion that TriMet has the resource to expand it. So we need to take it upon ourselves at some point on how we cope with the future. 
So I appreciate the question. Mike, anything you want to add, add to that? Um, no, I, again, you summed it up well. It, the, the service there doesn't exist now. And, uh, you know, I will echo what Dwight said, Commissioner. You have been banging this drum for a long time. And uh, certainly the bus on shoulder is something that we as a county bring up a lot. It's happening to the north um, up in Washington and Vancouver, actually quite a bit for, for a variety of reasons. ODOT just has some different challenges maybe with the highways that are built in Oregon. But uh, absolutely, you know, we're keeping our eye on that so that when there's a provider willing to use it, the option would be there. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Thank you both. We're next going to go to um, Kent Haynes. Thank you for your patience, Kent. If you would please unmute yourself and tell us where you're from. Yes, if you could hear me. Uh, we're in uh, Happy Valley at the top of Mount Scott, across the street from the uh, Veterans Memorial Cemetery. And there's no service up here. We're stranded uh, and would like someone to look into the service for from the cemetery down to uh, Sunnyside, which goes through Mount Scott Boulevard, uh, 129, and ends up in 126, excuse me, 122, connecting to Sunnyside. And there's also on the, I guess we're basically on the borderline between counties. Uh, we can walk out of uh, the county very easily but I think the cemetery is kind of half half split between counties, but there's no way for people to get from Clackamas to the cemetery on Memorial Day or any other time. There is a transmit service, uh, I think, that ends at the bottom of the cemetery. But we're stranded here. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, Kent. Um, so again, if you'd like to provide comment, you may do so by using the raise hand feature on the Zoom bar, which is at the top or the bottom of your Zoom screen. And if you're on the phone, dial star nine. You may also send us an email at clack, or excuse me, at news, the, hang on a minute, I'm new here, <laughs> at clackco news at clackamas.us, apologize for that. So let's go back to another question that we had received by email. This is, this is from Hannah and Gladstone. She writes, please bring the MAX train out to Oregon City. It is essential. We need fast public transit. At the end of the Oregon Trail, come on. Thank you. Well, thank you for your comment, Hannah. Um, Hannah, we have another comment from Vern. Vern shares his transit concerns from a friend. Uh, making transit cashless. Many people aren't paying at all, and who is monitoring this? The second point is bus service has been cut back, the number 32, making it difficult for residents. Yes, still using the bus and will in the future since they can't drive any longer is his third point. And this fourth and final point is some of the drivers are so grumpy. Thank you for the ones who are kind. So um, with that, again, to pose a comment, you can uh, use the raise your hand feature on Zoom, and you, up on your Zoom bar at the top or the bottom of your screen. And you could also dial star nine if you're joining us by phone. So why don't we go to another common question uh, that not many people think about, but we can hear, is um, that not many people think about taking transit to Mount Hood. So why does the county invest to, in transit to recreation areas on Mount Hood, and how does taking transit improve the experience for people visiting the mountain? Well, we happen to have, um, I'm gonna sh share another screen here, um, or another, and we, where is it, here we go. So here, uh, if you can all see that, um, here's a list of the transit providers in Clackamas County, and one of those um, for the area that 
Kimberly just spoke of is the Mount Hood Express. It provides transit um, up to the Mount Hood area. Um, and it, it, uh, go, it's, it begin, well, I think you can access it from the Sandy area um, and parts of Gresham, I think, feed into that as, from TriMet as well. Um, uh, but uh, there is a means to get up to Mount Hood. And there's also been a request actually to increase service up there and actually have other transit agencies merge up there into what's called a hub. I, I believe, isn't that right, Mike? You want to speak to that? The transit hub concept that's being explored up on the mountain? Yeah, I, I, I'll confess, I don't know a lot about it. Um, the, the programs actually run out of a, a different department in the county, but um, but yeah, I know that's been certainly looked at ways to get to Bend, ways to get to Hood River and expand, expand that, that network even further up to and going across and around the mountain. Um, yeah, and I do know that the Mount Hood Express has been good about getting federal grants that have helped it, helped it operate um, through, through uh, programs, through uh, federal lands access program. So... Yeah, the, the other advantage of showing this screen here, I just, just for, the, for the viewers here, you can see that TriMet is our number one provider for you know, majority of the transit in Clackamas County. Uh, South Metro Area Regional Transit is um, in the Malala area, so they provide service out over there. We have Canby Area Transit. Um, I'm sorry, I, I messed up here. Um, South Metro Area Regional Transit is SMART out of Wilsonville. I messed that up with South Clackamas Transit. So, um, so, so you can access, so that provides service to Wilsonville and I know that they go all the way down into Salem area and they connect with the chariot service in Salem. Uh, Canby area transit provides service all the way in Oregon city, I believe. And, and I think they connect into Wilsonville, uh, Sandy, uh, in Sandy, the Sandy area Metro, Sam, uh, provides service, um, to the Sandy area primarily and South Clackamas. Um, I'm going to move my screen here so I can read it. South Clackamas Transit District um, provides that service out in the Malala area. And I mentioned Mount Hood Express. And then lastly, the Clackamas County Community College Express Shuttle provides service in parts of that. And you can see the links there. And if, you, if anyone wants to email us, if you can't copy these links um, to, provide, you know, to get more information, we're happy to provide that to you. Um, the, the caller earlier from uh, who spoke uh, up at the top of Mount Scott um, reminded me right away of some of the, the challenges with the landscape in Clackamas County and that we have very hilly areas that are very hard to either walk um, and, and kind of can, can be very tiring and kind of dangerous as well. And a lot of unimproved roads and access areas. So in the Oak Grove area, we have some callers from there, the Gladstone area, I believe, we heard a caller and someone expressing about line 32. Um, we have a lot of hilly areas in that in area as well, but we have a great service on McLaughlin Boulevard. We have 33 uh, that covers most of that, and um, and we also have the Orange Line, which you connect to at Park Avenue. So there's pretty good service available there. And um, Milwaukee, uh, uh, the caller Rob Kappa lives in Milwaukee, is one of the better served cities in Clackamas County that has service provided by TriMet, particularly. Um, so it has really great service, and most of Milwaukee is relatively easy to walk and is relatively flat. The, um, the areas that are hilly, um, like Oak Grove and so forth over the years, the last 20 years, have always been asking for like a jitney, like a local jitney or a shuttle to get them from where they live and then to the transit lines, which is, is a pretty good, it's, it's, a, it's a good system. It's used in other parts of the region. Um, it all takes resources. And to the caller that mentioned about something, I basically essentially a fareless or ride for free, somehow we need to find the resources to make, make these services happen. Without the resources, there's no way of providing the, the service, which is why we constantly ring the bell um, to try to encourage, encourage um, TriMet or someone to, to, to somewhat step up or the region to look at Clackamas County and say, you know, we should get our share as well. Um, of the transit dollars, um, and until that happens, we are um, we're a little bit handicapped. Uh, I'd love to hear anyone's opinion about any any that where you live, if you have any transit service nearby. Okay, 
Thank you for that. Um, I'm not seeing, um, hang on a moment. I'm not seeing any hands in response to that question, but if anybody would like to provide an answer, again, please use the raise hand feature on Zoom or dial star nine. We did have an email that came in that I'd like to share with you both. Um, it came from Tommy, or excuse me, Terry Thomas Whiskey. And I apologize if I miss, I read your last name. Uh, Terry writes, my transit hasn't changed much due to my work requiring use of my personal vehicle. What has changed is disinfecting the entire interior of my vehicle, the touch surfaces outside of it, canes, walkers, purses, packages, and anything else brought into the car. I do that up to three times per day on my dime. Considering how much it costs me weekly, I wonder about the additional costs transportation providers are incurring and the future impacts that it will have. Thank you for that comment, Harry. Yeah, there has been some uh, federal funding provided called CARES Act funding. And I know that, for example, I'll use TriMet because they've been pretty vocal about what they've been trying to do. Um, and they've been trying to disinfect the buses. They've been uh, going through, taking all those steps. Uh, and I think recently last week they were allowed or they uh, changed their ruling from six foot spacing on the buses with masks to three foot spacing uh, on the buses in TriMet. So I think that was, um, that was effective uh, either Monday of this week or Friday of last week, I believe they, they changed that policy. So yeah, COVID's had a lot of impacts on transit and because a lot of people are staying home, they've seen um, also a lot of revenue loss due to that. Um, number one, a lot of people aren't going to work. So the employee taxes are down, which is a revenue source for TriMet and also, um, just the, um, uh, the the rider fees as well that that uh, that is a source of revenue for, for them. So um, it has really had an impact, um, and I don't know how it has affected all the other agencies, but I know that they're using some of the CARES Act funding to fill in the gaps for that extra labor, that extra time and material, and hopefully those resources will continue to be provided um, so that we can keep our transit uh, system safe for everyone. Okay, thank you. We're going to move on to um, Kyle Lindman. Um, thank you for your comment, Kyle. Um, please unmute yourself and tell us where you're from. Hi, can you hear me okay? We can. Um, I'm Kyle. I'm actually the person that sent the first email. So I live right by the Clackamas Town Center, which is pretty good for getting into the metro area, but not um, a lot of places in Clackamas County. Um, my question was a, a lot of the the themes I'm hearing in the responses is that you know TriMet isn't really prioritizing Clackamas County. Is there a way as someone being served by TriMet to um, help advocate for Clackamas County in in the future? That that is a that's a, that's a good question. Thank you, Kyle, for that. Um, I would say there's probably two ways of doing that, um, or maybe even three. Number one, you can go to your if you live in the Sunnyside area, if you happen to be uh, within the city boundaries of Happy Valley, you know you can. I would encourage you to go and speak to this the um, Happy Valley City Council or public comment and express that and let them know that it's important to you. I do know that the the um, elected officials in Happy Valley um, are also very interested and wanting, yearning for more transit area. They have been helping uh, um, Clackamas County and others advocate when needed for more transit. So, but hearing that is is helpful. Um, it, it's always always a good reminder. You can testify also before the Board of County Commissioners on their Thursday meeting. Um, let our Board of County Commissioners know it's important to you, and if there is that there's very limited service. And also the best way is probably go right to the TriMet board and testify before them. I believe they meet monthly. Um, the TriMet board is not elected. They're appointed by the governor. Um, and um, we have, they have regions. So every uh, person on the board serves a particular geographic area. And uh, the, the um, representative that sits on TriMet who represents our area, your area where you are is Kathy Way. She's a resident of Happy Valley, I believe. 
So those are probably some ways we can help advocate. Uh, we also have tried in this transportation measure, measure that you'll see on the ballot on uh, November 3rd, I believe Metro is putting forward. Um, you'll, it's, uh, it doesn't add any new transit lines, but we did in that process really try to push for uh, shuttles and sidewalks and amenities and anything we can help to encourage people to use transit or provide new transit service to areas we don't have. Um, but as I kind of alluded to earlier, um, on an annual basis, we typically, we being the, the city, the members of the cities in Clackamas County and the county commissioners have a, a retreat uh, annually. And we talk about things and often this issue comes up and we've talked about and uh, about expanding or taking it upon this ourselves. How do we expand service in Clackamas County, knowing that TriMet may not be able to fill that gap. So um, our concern really is finding the resources and um, with all these measures recently on the ballot, it's very, very hard to um, initiate something uh, without the resources. So we've got to find a way to, to do this. And um, hopefully our transit providers, maybe in Clackamas County and, and our local leaders can get together and say, if we took this on ourselves, how would we approach it? So I, I'd love to hear Kyle, if you have any, anyone or anyone on the line have any ideas of how you would prefer to pay for the service or see those resources provide the service. I mean, where they, where they come from, how, how do we do this? Love to hear your ideas. I'm gonna jump in here, Commissioner. It's Dylan with PGA. I think Kimberly might be frozen for a second, so I'll just facilitate the the rest of of the the conversation real quick. Um, Kyle, if you wanted to go ahead and respond to Commissioner uh, Savas, you can real quick. But not sure if you will. There we go. Go ahead, Kyle. Oh, I, I I'm not sure if I have any concrete ideas on on how to do things, just <laughs> what I w would like to see, so. Okay. I, I do wanna add one more thing. Uh, you know, again, our transit development plan is a really good jumping off point for us right now. Um, we're gonna take that and we're hoping that it'll help us inform, uh, it'll help inform TriMet in the service that Clackamas County needs and wants. Um, and so, uh, we're going, I know we're going to be having a second round of outreach on that soon um, as we're taking what we've already learned and processing it. So hopefully we can use all of this and uh, organize it and hopefully make some progress. Yeah, Mike, what, what, when do we expect that uh, study to be completed? Oh, um, it's probably going to take us, it, the schedule shows adopting it uh, by the end of 2021. So we're, we're active in it now. We're, we're moving forward despite, despite all working a little differently right now. Um, and you know, we're, we're doing, we're finishing up our needs analysis and we're going to be drafting something probably this fall. And, um, and then within a, a year after that, hopefully adopt it. Yeah. And uh, as, as Mike's talking about this plan and we, we spoke about it is when that plan is completed, um, I, I think it'll it'll obviously be a conversation starter. It'll obviously be something that we can actually move uh, uh, move on and take take some efforts and say, okay, how how do we do it? Um, what are some ideas on on increasing service with the, our existing providers or a new provider, uh, whatever it may be? So I, that's that's why the study's underway and um, getting input on this has not really been easy from the our constituency, which is I think why we're doing this today just to hear from as many people as possible. We'll be doing a little bit of outreach in the county and probably a lot more when, when the study is completed. Uh, I, I did wanna just get to one thing that created a little bit of excitement a few years ago, and that was when the state legislature in 2017 uh, was working on a transportation package. And coming out of that, they did approve a bill, it's called HB 2017, and it provided, um, it was a carve out for transit and the transit was generated from an employee tax, not an employer tax, but an employee tax. And originally the concept was, is that those, those resources would be used to help provide service to the area where employees lived, not where they worked. Concurrently, the structure is that the employer taxes that are paid by every employer in the region uh, within the TriMet tri district are paid and they provide the service out in that area. And that's 
seems to be why a lot of that service is north of us. Um, well, what happened was, was that um, the rules committee about a year or so later um, uh, modified that rule. And so some of that money goes out to those other agencies that I listed earlier, but not to the degree that we had, had hoped. So um, uh, the term last mile um, is a term that we talk about for transit riders um, is that the last mile being wherever there is transit, approximately a quarter to half a mile uh, is about the range where people are willingly or able to, on an average to walk to access transit. And so providing that last mile service to where people reside is really, really, really important. And that's again where we just don't have a lot of service to provide. So shuttles and other, other means uh, can help get people to the corridors where there is transit. And that's, that's one of our goals. Thank you for that, Commissioner. Uh, and for those uh, listening and attending right now, I'm Dylan Blaylock with Public Government Affairs. Kimberly has had some technical problems, so I'm just going to finish out um, her role in this and facilitate the last questions we have. Again, if we have attendees who want to give any or to want to give comment or have any remaining questions, please utilize the raise hand feature on Zoom. And if you're on the phone, hit star nine, and that will let us know that you have something to, to say or something to ask. So with that, we're going to go to another common question that we get. And that is how is, and we, we do hear this a lot in, in transit and BTD, how is Clackamas County working with other agencies to improve options for more than just the urban areas? So how are we working with other agencies to improve rural area transit? That's a great question. Um, and this is where I'm gonna, gonna actually wanna not only recognize, but compliment and point to our rural um, not our, not just our rural transit providers, but our other providers other than TriMet in, in Clackamas County. And Dwight, who spoke first, uh, he provides, SMART provides that service out, and they go so far beyond their boundaries to provide service, and um, just as Canby does and other agencies. So they're looking at that, and they, that those 20, HB 2017 dollars in revenue that I spoke to, they're trying to utilize that to extend service. But more more exciting lately is that they've been working on how to get interconnectivity between themselves and between all the other providers. So they're trying to be in those areas where there isn't any in those gaps, if you will. They're trying to fill those as best they can. And I, they're just doing a fantastic job with very limited resources. And I just want to just recognize each and every, every, each and every one of them for the hard work they're doing. They're meeting more frequently than they have before. The last two or three years, they've really been buckling down and, and doing a lot of good work. So um, that's, to get to that question, I think that's our best approach at this time. All right, very good. Uh, we have a couple remaining questions that we're gonna pose, but again, I'll remind attendees, if you have anything to say, please go ahead and hit the raise hand feature on Zoom. Let's us know uh, that you'd like to give a comment or pose a question. Uh, another one we got. Uh, with the county budget facing challenges, where does road funding come from? Is road funding facing cuts? So I guess this really gets to the nature of the general fund versus you know dedicated funding. So I think that's I think it's probably good for either of you who would like to to tackle that. Well, great. I'm going to say a little bit, and I'm going to put Mike to work and let him say a little bit too. So, um, so yeah, our, our property taxes by law cannot be used on on transportation or or on roads. Um, there's a state law that that disallows that. So all of our transportation dollars come from things like vehicle registration fees, but primarily gas tax is where, and fuel taxes is where a lot of our revenues come from. And they have limitations on what those dollars can be used for as well. So that's, that's where the resources come from. And transit dollars, as I mentioned, come from now employee taxes as well as employer taxes and also rider fees. And I'm gonna let Mike say a few words on this as well, Mike. Yeah, well, Commissioner Savas has been uh, in this job a long time, so I, I don't know if you, you just summed it up very nicely, but yeah, it's true. The Oregon Constitution actually protects the gas tax and vehicle registration fees that we all pay and says it has to be used for vehicle purposes um, in, in public roads. And so um, it's exactly right. It's gas tax, it's vehicle registration fees. It's also truckers who heavy trucks that pay weight mile taxes. All that goes into a pot of money um, to the state, and it's shared. Uh, the state gets about half the pot, 
to take care of the interstates and the whole state system. This, the counties in Oregon split 30% of it and the cities split 20% of it. And that's how, that's how roads are funded. Um, again, it, yet it's correct, state statute does not permit using the property taxes you pay to be used on roads. So it's a, you know, our, our, our road fund is protected, but at the same time, the county or any county can't use the property taxes to backfill and just go pave a road if they want. Mike, could you just speak a little bit about, about sidewalks and how that is part of our transit system as well? Absolutely, yeah. Um, sidewalks and bike lanes, actually. Uh, the law also requires us to spend 1% of our, of our um, road fund on bike ped facilities. Um, and that includes maintenance and, and upgrades. The, the county actually has a bike and pedestrian master plan, which we're actually applying for a grant right now to, uh, to the state to update it. It's been a little while since it's updated. But uh, we actually get, a pr we do okay getting federal and state grants to add sidewalks, add bike lanes. Um, whenever we build a new road, we're, we always put in, uh, in the urban area, bike lanes and sidewalks. Um, if it's rural, we'll, we'll, we'll add wider shoulders so that people can utilize them as well. Um, but yeah, it is part of our transportation system for sure. Um, uh, I think Kimberly mentioned it early on, her question about uh, multi-modes. Uh, we, we do our best to provide for them. Uh, and, uh, and absolutely, I'd say most of the grants we actually get nowadays are, are that are actually available through federal and, and, and safety than, than anything else. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Okay, great, thank you both for that. Um, we did get another question uh, just now over email um, that someone sent in. This is from Sage. Sage writes, uh, and I think this was covered a little bit before, we can expand on it in the second question as well. Hi, I wanted to ask what could be done to make it easier to get to Mount Hood from Oregon City also to make it easier to get to Wilsonville from Oregon City. Wow, I'm not sure how to tackle that one, but uh, and I'm not sure we're that well connected where we can do that efficiently as of yet, but um, uh, Mike, any ideas on that one? Oh, uh, again, that's why we're doing a transit, I'm gonna keep pushing it, but it's why we're doing a transit development plan. I can't overstate how important that is to identify all these gaps and then say, how can we do it? Uh, you know, I don't know if Dwight's still here. He might not be. Uh, I, I don't know if Smart, ex, Smart. you know, Commissioner Savis mentioned it, Dwight Smart does a great job in Wilsonville. And I know they do provide connections outside it. I don't know for sure if they go to Oregon City. They actually might. It's worth looking on their website to see. Um, and again, as we mentioned, Mount Hood Express picks up from Sandy and goes up to Mount Hood. Um, I don't believe that Sandy provides a bus to Oregon City. Um, so there, there's a gap. There's gaps, as we mentioned, in, in, in Clackamas County. And um, we're currently working to identify them and try and come up with a plan on how we can, how we can serve it. Mike, do you mind actually um, saying, or Commissioner Savas, you can jump into, how can people comment on the transit development plan? Or when does that go about happening? Well, we had one round already. Um, we are going to have another one. Um, I, I can try and pull it up here and, and see if I could find it, or uh, I'll try and get that information before we get before we close. Okay, very good. I'm sorry, Commissioner. Did you want to say something too? I just I would just add that um, from Wilsonville, for example, uh, I'll, I'll bring it up, but maybe make a stronger point this time uh, on 205. 205 is a really important corridor. It really connects the 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 western part of Clackamas County to the eastern part, uh, and yet there's no transit. And actually, the Green Line, for those of you who know where the town, the Clackamas uh, Town Center is, that's where the Green Line stops. And um, from that point to Wilsonville along 205, it's 14 miles. And it's 14 miles within the urban growth boundary, it's 14 miles within um, the metropolitan TriMet area, uh, the region, and yet there's no, there's no connection between the two. And if there were, there'd be, there'd be a great opportunity to fill at least one of the big, huge linkages there that the caller has, has, uh, is inquiring about. And connected to that, right nearby is also the Sunrise Corridor. And, and reasonably so, it, I mean, it's, 
you really can't put a bus on a, on a poor road or a congested road or, um, and, or a road that doesn't have any good shoulders to drop a passenger off and on. It's just not safe. So you need really some amenities, some facilities like sidewalks or a pullout and so forth. So for those of you that know Highway 212, which we call the Sunrise Corridor, so to speak, um, as it gets to the 224 Rock Creek area, that three lanes to the east and three lanes to the west uh, is reduced to one and one. And um, there's a kind of a hairpin turn right there. And that's really the end of any improvements in the area um, safety wise. And so that it would be a great connection really if that was ever built and completed to get out to Sandy um, so that someone could get all the way to, we, we have an opportunity with those two corridors being improved um, to have a complete connection from the west to the east. And uh, it's fairly efficient, very, fairly simple, but just very expensive. Yes. Okay, very good. Thank you for that. Um, I see we're right about at approaching 320. So I'll give another shout, call out to our attendees. If you do have uh, a comment or question you'd like to, uh, to raise, please do hit the raise hand button very soon in the next minute or so, because I've got one last question that we've got. Um, uh, actually, it's really from social media. We've condensed it down to one that we hear a lot on our social media posts, and it goes along like this. Essentially, with so many economic issues that the county is dealing with, why are we focusing on transit now? So that's kind of condensed from a lot of different, uh, again, comments we see on our social media pages. So I thought I'd throw that out. Again, with so many economic issues we're dealing with, why focus on transit now? Which this is another way of saying, why is transit so important to the economy? Um, but there we go, uh, Commissioner or Mike. Well, yeah, happy to say, well, first of all, the Clackamas County has a number of priorities or focuses, if you will. So it's not, we're not solely working on this. Uh, we kind of move our topics around. I think with the uh, housing crisis um, and the affordability crisis in the region, um, people simply can't afford to own a car. And we're seeing more people that are struggling and people need to get back and forth to work. So it's really important for people with limited resources, um, uh, you know, marginalized communities and populations that are struggling that they have some means of getting where they need to go, including the doctor, including their, their children. Um, there's just a lot of important needs. We, people need to get where they need to go. Um, and uh, that's part of our responsibility. And so it's not just a focus. The other, other thing that's really brought this to, uh, to our attention in a strong way is the fact that the area is being considered again for tolling. And um, there is going to be a need for and a push to say, you know, whether whether it's for uh, climate purposes of reducing carbon emissions or whatnot, that we need to take alternatives. Since, but yet, we need to provide that that alternative or that means. So, transit for now and transit for the future is really part of our system uh, that we need to address. And um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I forgot exactly what what that is, but I believe that we have a, res uh, a federal responsibility, clean air, uh, federal emissions and so forth, that we find ways of reducing uh, our carbon footprint in, in the transportation mode. Mike, do you have a, I forgot what that actually is titled, um, but I, I, I know we have a responsibility to look at all aspects and on every project we do, we have to weigh, weigh those factors as well. Yeah, I don't recall. Okay. Very good. Oh, go ahead, Mike. I, I, well, I, I just want to add, I apologize. I'm adding to the chat. I hope people can see it. An email to send. Um, Brett Setterfield is our contact for the transit development plan. And if someone wants to be added to our interested parties list or make a comment, just send, send an email to the email address I just added there. Thank you for that. It is in the chat for, um, for all our attendees. And I will jump in real quick and reference the uh, uh, what I'm sorry to give the visual on what Commissioner Savage just referenced with the strategic priority. Um, that is, of course, performance Clackamas. Anyone can go at any time to clackamas.us slash performance. Um, and we have five strategic priorities. You can find this document, which was just updated earlier this year. Uh, one of them is grow a vibrant economy and the other Another one out of five is build a strong infrastructure. Again, if you're interested in looking over those and seeing what our strategic results are and our goals that we're going for, you can go to clackamas.us slash performance. 
Dylan, I just add one more thing. I know that uh, Teresa Christofferson is on the attendees list and um, along with Christina Babb. Oh no. We, we, looks like we like, lost Mike. Oh no, what is going on today? Well, Commissioner, we still got you and you're the main yeah. show, so that's great. So there well, you know, I, I wanted just to say with regard to the last question, um, uh, if anyone has any ideas of something they think that we ought to be talking about on our listing session, I back. Oh, please, please jump in. Go ahead, Mike. My back. I apologize. Uh, Teresa Christofferson is on the is one of the attendees, and if you wanted her to talk about the Mount Hood Express specifically, uh, she she knows it inside and out. Oh, would you like me to bring her over, Commissioner? Sure. Okay. Teresa, if you are there, and you can go ahead and unmute yourself, and please tell us about the Mount Hood Express. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Teresa Christofferson with the Social Services Division here at Clackamas County, and uh, I've been the project manager of the Mount Hood Express for a period of time. Um, so just to a couple of points, um, questions about why the county has been working with, um, with this project up on the mountain. The Mount Hood Express did start as a very small community-based shuttle that was providing service from Sandy um, up through the communities there at Mount Hood, uh, Welch's, Rhododendron, et cetera. And it since then has expanded to also be able to provide service up to government camp and to the Timberline Lodge. Um, one point I'd really like to make about that is that while obviously it has a lot of recreational users, um, about 35 to 40 percent of the rides that we provide are actually for people who are um, working up there on the mountain and need that service to be able to get to, uh, to employment. We also have a big footprint in the community in terms of providing rides to local residents for everything from grocery shopping to school to um, medical appointments. So I think that it's an important service um, for the communities although it definitely does um, provide service to access recreational areas that hasn't been there in the past. Um, one of my favorite stories from the early days of uh, starting service up to Timberline Lodge is talking to an individual who was in a wheelchair who had never been able to go to Timberline Lodge as a lifelong resident of the Portland area. And uh, she was able to make those connections and actually go up and see Timberline Lodge herself um, for the first time in her entire life. So um, I think that there's a lot to be said for those services and um, speaking to some of the other points too, uh, as we look toward the future, working with uh, the transit development plan and building, the, building those connections between providers, I think is just really gonna go a long ways toward enhancing transit service for all the residents of Clackamas County. Thank you, Teresa. Excellent. Thank you very much, Teresa. Well said. Uh, before I kick it to Commissioner Savas for any um, ending comments, because you were approaching 3.30, Mike, uh, were you able to find that um, uh, the website you were looking for before as far as uh, giving public comment? Oh, no, it's just the email in the chat. Oh, it's just, that is the yeah, email. Yeah, that right. is on our website. So, I mean, we do have a web page, um, which is uh, clackamas.us. Uh, slash planning slash transit. And there's a, a, a section there devoted to the transit development plan, um, oh, but, but it does there. provide Brett's email address as a way to give comment. Right, we've got it on the screen now. So yep. again, clackamas.us slash planning slash transit. Um, that's a good way to keep abreast of what's going on with everything with transit. Okay, Mr. Savas, uh, do you have any uh, final parting words for those attendees? No, I just want to just thank everyone for listening in today and their comments and all those who emailed in. I appreciate that. And I want to thank Mike and Teresa and all and um, and Dwight and all the other callers for their comments and participating today. It's been very helpful. And uh, if you have any um, further input and or ideas, do not hesitate to reach out to us. Um, uh, my email address, I'll just say it out. I don't have I don't have a screen share to share that. It's P S A. B A S at clackamas.us um, and um, or you can contact BCC mail and, and input that and we also have some just go to our website at, um, at uh, www.clackamas.us and you can uh, reach out to us there as well and thank you everyone for attending today.
Very good. Thank you very much for that, Commissioner Savas. I will also share my screen one last time. If you, as attendees, would like to be kept abreast of uh, listening sessions, future listening sessions that we are doing, um, you can always go to our front page of our website or any page on our website, actually. At the very bottom, there's Get Email Updates. You are welcome to go ahead and hit that, and then you can sign up for the Board of County Commissioners, um, the monthly newsletter. We always send it out to Board of County Commissioners list, usually the monthly newsletter as well. And you can see just a, a litany of, of different things that you can sign up for here. So that's great. We will probably hold our next listening session in two weeks. Um, uh, that's usually what our schedule is every two weeks or so now. So for Dylan Blaylock with Public Government Affairs and Commissioner Savas and Mike Besner, thank you very much for joining. Have a good day. Okay.